My fox when I was a kid was my first best friend, so he taught me like, hey, you don't need people, you got us. Our key goal here at Save a Fox is when we take these foxes in that we are making their lives as happy as possible. I need them to be happy, for me to be happy. When I was 15, my mom did wildlife rehabilitation, but I was the one doing most of the raising of the animals, and I fell in love with this gray fox. I just had a really hard time as a kid, and especially as a teenager. I was always the weird kid, <laughs> so like I really didn't have any friends, so that fox was kind of my best friend. I came home from school and the fox was waiting for me and he'd get really excited to see me and he'd like scream and squeal and it was just the best feeling ever because I was just like wow no one else gets excited to see me <laughs> except for that fox. Even after we released it he got used to what time my bus would come so he would sit at the end of the driveway and wait for me to get off the bus and I just remember all the kids being like oh my gosh there's a fox there. And they had no idea, like, I knew the fox. And I wrote in my little childhood diary, someday I'm gonna work with foxes. And that was my goal. And I just stuck with it. It just made me wanna do better in school. It made me wanna, like, just do better in life because I had this, like, huge goal. And I was just striving for it. Save a Fox was the first primarily fox rescue, and then fox rescues started after me, which actually kind of sucked for me because I was the one making mistakes, and then everyone else got to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> What's up, Crunch Crunch? Hey, Bubba Squish. This is the first yard that we built on this property in 2017. It's our largest, and it's also got our biggest group of foxes in it. There are eight in total. That fox there is Bongo. He's our oldest. He's about 11 and a half. He came to us around six years old. He was a breeder for his whole life on a fur farm. The fur farmer's kids actually were super attached to him. And when he was going to be retired, they begged for him to come to us instead. Good boy. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Some of our foxes are fur farm rescues and some of them are pet surrenders. Her original owner actually passed away, so then it was his wife that surrendered her to us. You ready for snacks, huh? You ready for treats? I know you get really mad if I try to visit you and I don't bring snacks. We actually built this cage specifically for her when she got here, so we tried to mimic what her cage at home looked like because foxes have a hard time adjusting, especially when they were pets. Oh, okay. <laughs> she didn't want me to hold it. <laughs> Fox world is very much a matriarchal society. Sophie, for example, she is in charge of all of these boys. And some of them do better than others at doing as they're told. Boss and the boys. <laughs> Discipline <and fair. laughs> Our dog Fauna there uh, really loves to play with the foxes and Mal and Esme are huge fans of dogs. So we bring her in here once in a while to have playtime with them and Mal is like grooming her and occasionally helping her and <laughs> just having a great time. Every time I'm playing with a fox, I'm recording and I'm posting it, and people like to see the bond with the foxes. They like to see, um, <laughs> they're playing. 
A couple years ago, I was diagnosed on the autism spectrum. That was kind of an eye-opener because that's why I couldn't connect with people or couldn't maintain friendships. And that's why I really bonded with animals. And social media for me, it's just so much easier because I'm talking to myself on camera and it's very impersonal and it's just more comfortable for me. Biting for foxes doesn't mean aggression all the time. They're very just mouthy animals and they even like, even when they're really happy and excited, they'll kind of bite down on your hand lightly and they'll, they'll giggle and they'll wag their tail. People will say that a fox is kind of like a dog and cat combined, but I just like to drill in people's minds that they're not domesticated. <coughs> they're wild by nature. They don't 100% potty train, none of them ever. I don't have furniture in my house. Chairs, but not anything that's like padded because they'll dig holes through it. There are a lot of wild cards with foxes. Dogs always love you. Cats either always love you or usually just always hate you. It's, there's no in between there. But foxes are just very unpredictable. When I communicate with a fur farm, I never come at them like, I don't like what you do, you're a terrible person. I try to just build a good rapport with them and they respect that I give them respect so then I can take their foxes. I'm very much not a protester and I'm against the protesting method because all it does is it makes the fur farmers angry and it's just gonna make them wanna do it more. So I always tell people if you wanna go against fur farming, the best thing you could do is just don't buy fur. I educate people like, did you know that at fur farms they farm mink and that mink lashes is actually made from mink and the foxtails they sell at the Renaissance, those are from fur farms. So I tell people like, probably don't buy those foxtails because you're wearing a fox that had to be killed so that you could wear it around. <laughs> There is a lot that people can learn by just connecting with animals. Right now in today's world, phones are such a problem. <laughs> and it's really bad for your mental health. Animals can really teach you to just be in the moment. It's really good to just watch the way they do things, the way that they interact with the world. It's kind of how humans used to be, and we just drift further and further away. I can't see myself quitting. A couple times a week I might reach a breaking point and I might be like, oh, I can't do this anymore, but it's very, it's very fleeting <laughs> because it's hard work. I'm in it for the long run. I'm gonna keep rescuing animals. I'm starting another fox rescue and if that goes well, maybe I'll start another one.